Reverend Casimir Brown, co-lead of the faith team in the Poor People's Campaign and National Call for Moral Revival. We are privileged along with the Samuel DeWitt Proctor Conference to co-convene and launch this week an interfaith prophetic witness and prayerful action for a just democracy. The vision is indelibly written. Isaiah 58 1 reads, Shout it aloud, do not hold back, raise your voice like a trumpet. The vision is understood in the sounds of Ella's song. We who believe in freedom shall not rest until it comes. Our only direction is towards the mark of justice. As the truth and light upon this nation reveals its underbelly of injustice, we stand on the promises of God and that the prayers of the righteous availeth much. All across this country, in all of its diversity, those who believe in democracy are casting votes for justice. Lights of love are being lit and sounds of the spirit are being heard. Prayers of peace are transcending and voices of victory are in the air. In the midst of the multiple and intersecting pandemics, the pandemic of racism, the pandemic of poverty, the COVID-19 pandemic, and the pandemic of police violence and threats against the pillars of democracy in the making, all over this nation, people of goodwill are joining this more prophetic vote. As we continue the march of the souls to the poles, may the reign of insurmountable spiritual power manifest God's will for justice and righteousness upon this land. May the vision of love and light, truth and testimonies of God's power defeat all that is wicked in the land. And may all that is sacred in God's presence rest and abide in this prophetic call to witness. It is my pleasure to introduce a reflection offered by Imam Jahari Abdul Malik, followed by a prayer from Reverend Tracy Blackman, Associate General Minister of Justice and Local Church Ministries for the United Church of Christ. We will conclude with the ringing of the bells led by Reverend Robert Fisher of St. John's in Washington, D.C., where the bells were forged by Paul Revere's son and ringing for justice this day. In the name of God, the most gracious, the most merciful, we thank God Almighty, and we're grateful for the opportunity to share what has been provided to us from the legacy of all of the prophets. So if Adam and his wife, or Abraham, Sarah, and Hagar, Moses, and Aaron, Jesus, and his blessed mother Mary, we call them Isa ibn Maryam in Arabic, and the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him and his family. We ask God's peace and blessings upon all of them. And all of us have been inspired in our own spiritual lives by the examples of the prophets and their families. And we have read about the stories and the struggles of African Americans coming to the shores of North America before, with, and after Columbus. And our religion, our language, our history, and our culture were taken from us. But in the establishment of democracy and the First Amendment to the Constitution opened the door for us to be free to practice our religion. And so some of us, like me, found our way back to Islam. We are a people in America who have struggled to build this constitutionally based society. And we look back at our heroes and sheroes with pride. We often say that we wish that we had been there with them. We wish that we had been able to fight against slavery with Harriet Tubman and Frederick Douglass or against Jim Crow and segregation. We wish that we had been marching with Dr. King, but tonight we hear Malcolm X ringing in our ears saying that it looks like it might be the year of the ballot or the bullet. It's interesting in that speech that Malcolm X gave that he doesn't talk much about the bullet. He spends most of his time in the speech talking about, in 1964, about the ballot. And so today the ballot is more important than it has ever been. And with my own religious tradition as in Islam, we believe in the Quran and the example of the Prophet Muhammad. And the Quran says, go out and enjoy what is good and forbid what is evil. The Prophet Muhammad said, if you're given a choice between two things, always choose what is best. 
Malcolm X reminds us that we need to engage in a program of education for our people so we understand what the role of politics is in our lives because at the root of it, democracy is on the table. We must be reminded again to remain engaged in the political process that voting is just the lowest hanging fruit. But what's at stake? Dr. King talks about racism, poverty, and militarism. And our vote will enshrine the ability to establish health and education and justice in our society. But in order to do it, brothers and sisters, we must be organized. We have to get our souls to the polls. Those of us who have access need to be engaged with our family and our loved ones to make it happen. Governance that is consultative and representative of our people is what's on the line. This government today has shown that they are not interested in democracy that the government has shown us that we as a people need to be standing to maintain good governance in America. And in order to do that, we need you. We need you to be able to fight. I don't care whether you're a Democrat or Republican, whether you're a Muslim, Hindu, Christian, Buddhist, Sikh, Jain, Zoroastrian. What matters now is to look into our own traditions and find whatever the moral compass is so that you and I can work together to struggle to maintain good governance in America. It is not just America's governance that's on the line. The whole world is looking to us for our leadership, our prophetic leadership. The Quran says, let there rise out of your party and join in what is good and forbidding what is evil. Let us hear the call today We've heard the bell and the shofar. Let us hear the call and let us answer that call that we might stand firmly for democracy in our land. Until then, assalamu alaikum. Friends, let us pray. Most wise and gracious God, God in whom we live, move, and have our being. God in whose image we are all fearfully and wonderfully made. God whose very breath we breathe together. God who is intimately acquainted with the pains and the sorrows and the challenges of this world. God who mourns with those who mourn and weep over the deaths of those who have been sacrificed on the altar of capitalism, white supremacy, and greed. God, who visits with those who have been impacted and infected, not just by COVID, but by callousness, by failure to respond to the needs of your people. God, we thank you for being a God of the valley as much as a God of the mountaintop. And in this moment, we gather in this virtual space to thank you for the privilege of participating with you in the healing of this nation. God, we ask that you grant us courage and grant us conviction. We ask that you grant us endurance and you grant us empathy. We ask that you grant us perseverance and that you grant us patience. We ask that you challenge us consistently, God, by the moving of your spirit to do all we can to make sure that the voices of your people are heard, all of your people. We do not presume to have a monopoly on you, God, but we know that you have a heart and compassion for those who are suffering, those who are without shelter, 
those who are without food, those who are without resources that they need to live a full and sufficient life. We know, God, that you are not pleased with our systems that would hoard much for a few and ignore the needs of many. And so God, challenge and interrupt our complacency that we might be about what we have been called to do. That is God. To not worship you with empty rhetoric, to not offer to you empty ritual, but to feed the hungry, to clothe the naked, to shelter those that have no place to lay their head, to heal the sick, and to repair the breach, restoring the streets for us to dwell in. You, God, have tasked us with this work and this worship. We ask God that you empower us by your power and by your might, that we do all that we can to make sure every vote is counted, every voice is heard, Every lament is felt in the pulling of the lever. God, we ask you to do what you have done time and time again. Scripture tells us that you are on the side of those who are oppressed. God, we believe and we know what is possible when we work together in accordance with your will. God, we ask also prayers for those who would try to suppress, prayers for those who would try to place obstacles in the ways of those who simply want their voice to be heard. God, interrupt their plans. Confuse the evil. Baffle the enemy. Not those that we would call enemies of ourselves, but those who would seek to stop the kingdom that you have called for. A place where there are sufficient resources equitably shared so that everyone, God, who is created in your image and who breathes your breath might be cared for. Amen. We ring bells for a just democracy. We sound the shofar for a just democracy that ensures all citizens vote without intimidation and harassment. We offer a call to prayer for a just democracy for each person across race, ethnicity, religion, gender, and sexual orientation. We ring bells for a just democracy that eradicates racist voter suppression laws and lifts up the people including every one of the millions of disenfranchised voters. We ring bells for a just democracy that respects all workers and knows each one of the more than 218,000 Americans who have died from COVID-19 as essential and sacred. We lift voices in chant for a just democracy that fights poverty, not the 140 million poor and low income. 
We sound the shofar for a just democracy that ensures health care for all, including the 133 million Americans with pre-existing conditions. We ring bells for the earth, including the sacred lands of First Nations and indigenous beloved in peril now, as well as water and air for our children to live. We ring out bells to remember at our core who we are and who this country may yet be. We ring out bells with clarity of conscience and sacred duty sounding in our very souls for those within this country and well beyond, recognizing our responsibility and impact across the world. Thank <laughs> you.